going to be solving some kinematics questions from the 2007 F equals to MA contest. The first question is question one. Question one reads, an object moves in two dimensions according to R of t is equal to 4t squared minus 9i hat plus 2t minus 5j hat, where r is in meters and t in seconds. When does the object cross the x-axis? So, so we know that i hat is motion is position in the x direction and j hat is position in the y direction and an object crossing the x axis and that is basically when uh the y position is zero and uh we're only supposed to factor in y, y position here because uh when it crosses the x axis only matters on where it is reference to the y direction and that's basically saying that this value it has to be zero the part underlined by blue because that value is the coordinate of the y direction and we can solve that so 2t minus 5 is equal to zero so then 2t is equal to 5 and then t is equal to 2.5 uh, seconds so that's our answer and that's option e let's move on to our next question next question is the graph shows velocity as a function of time for a car what was the acceleration at time equals to 90 seconds so at time equals 90 seconds on the graph is right here it's, 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 it, it's a point where which has 20 meters per second as a velocity and uh, we know this is a VT diagram and that acceleration in this case is uh, the slope of this because acceleration is velocity over time so in this case uh, we had to find the slope of this uh, of this position and we can see that it has like a somewhat straight line like that and uh, and so Basically, to find the slope, we need to find the change in the y position over the change in the x position. So the so this length in blue is going to be uh, 30 minus 10, which is 20, and uh, this position in the green is going to be 120 minus 60, which is 60. So then the slope, uh, this acceleration, is basically going to be 20 over 60. Which is one third, which is going to be, which is about 0 0.33 uh, meters per second squared. So our answer is B. Now on to our next problem. Oh, uh, also another note is that uh, some people might say that the answer is one meters per second squared because uh, they because they just saw the two units here and two units here. Whereas you have to look at the spacing between the units. As here, spacing is 30 per each side, and spacing here is only 10. Okay, uh, on to our next problem. Problem 3 reads The coordinate of an object is given as a function of time by x equals to 8t minus 3t squared, where x is in meters and t is in seconds. Its average velocity over the time interval t equals to 1 to t equals to 2 seconds is which of the following. So first let's write so first let's write down all the information that we're given. So we're given that x is equal to 8t minus 3t squared. Uh, so and we're supposed to find the average velocity and average velocity depends on the uh, difference in position and time and we're given the time interval so we have to find the position so we can use that this relationship that we're given so uh, in t equals to 1 when t is equal to 1 uh, it's x is going to be equal to 8 8 times 1 minus 3 times 1 squared that's simply going to be 5 and uh, when t equals to 2 x is equal to 8 times 2 minus 3 times 2 squared 
it's going to simply be 4. And, and then we're asked to find the average velocity. So to find the average velocity, that's basically the change. It's basically delta x over delta t. And delta x is uh, 4 minus 5. Or actually, I should label this as x1 and x2. Not to get confused because the initial x when t when the time is zero, one, it's going to be five, and when the in the final position, uh, which is x two, the time is equal to two. So four over five over uh, the time interval, which is two minus one, and this is going to be negative one over one, which is negative one meters per second and that is going and that's going to be option choice B so so that's your answer uh, now let's move on to problem 4 problem 4 reads an object is released from rest and falls a distance h during the first second of time how far will it fall during the next second of time okay so uh, in this question uh, the object is in free fall, so we can use the kinematic equations to find how uh, far it will fall. So, uh, so how far it will fall in the next second of time? So first, we can just establish that uh, t1 is equal to 1, and then t2 is equal to 2, and then uh, the the second and the time we're trying to the time interval. Is, is equal to delta t, uh, and which is the distance, which is the next second, which is uh, the second second. So, in this in this case, how far will fall? We can use this kinematic equation, which is uh, delta y, since it's a free fall, is equal to uh, v naught times time plus one half a t squared. And in this case, it mentioned that it's uh, has a it's released from rest, so the initial velocity is equal to zero. And uh, and since it's in yeah, and since it's in free fall, its acceleration is the acceleration due to gravity, which is g equals to one half times g times t squared. Uh, okay. So now we have to we have to find how far it will travel, uh, in the when t equals to one and t equals to two, then subtract both of them, because we have to find how, uh, how much, how much uh distance it covers between, in the second, uh, in the second second. So. So the first time interval, uh, we. We, when we are including the time is one, then uh, we're, we're supposed to find out to y, and I'll just I'll just write this as h because that's what they that's what they given delta y as. So it, when t equals to one, h is equal to one half times g times uh, t squared, so one squared, and that's going to be equal to one half g. And uh, when t equals to 2, uh, the height is equal to 1 half times g times 2 squared, and that's going to be equal to uh, 2g. So in this case, we're supposed to find the height traveled between, between the first and second second. And uh, 1 half g is what it traveled during the uh, time interval t equals to 0 to t equals to 1, which is the first second. So to find the time it took from the first second to, to find the, sorry, height that it traveled from t time equals to 1 to time equals to 2, we subtract both of them. So I'll just label this as h1, h1 and h2. So then we have h2 minus h1 is going to be equal to, as we have here, uh, 2g 
minus one half g. And this is going to be equal to uh, three halves g. And uh, and we noted that uh, that h, which is h h one, is basically the original h because during the first second of time, during the first second of time, what that basically means is that uh, first second of time refers to time equals to zero to time equals to one, how the distance traveled during that time interval, and that's what's given here. So this is basically, we can just refer to that as the h that was given. So, uh, and so we have h that was given is equal to one half g. So, uh, so, this, so this value over here is three times h. So, so we can write that the time it took so the so we can write that the during the second second is uh height during the second second is basically three of this original h that was given because three halves g is three times. So it's basically three uh, H. So that's your answer. Uh, let's now move on to the uh, problem six uh, because problem five is not kinematics. Um, the problem reads, at time t equals to zero, a drag racer starts from rest at the origin, it moves along a straight line with velocity given by v equals to 5t squared, where v is in meters per second and t in seconds. The expression for the displacement of the car from t equals to 0 to time t is which of the following. So we know that the we know that the velocity and time follow this ratio, and uh, the acceleration isn't constant and follows a curve, and we're supposed to find that area of that curve, which is the displacement. Yeah, because uh the because in a VT diagram, the area under a curve is the displacement, and it has a non-constant acceleration. So in this case, we can just use calculus. And since this is from 2007, older versions of the FMA usually um uh some problems usually have some calculus needed to solve them. So I will just uh so x equals to integral v d t and we can just solve this t squared d t and then this is equal to five over three t to the third by integrating. Uh now uh so we can clearly see that would give us the answer as b. And yeah, so basically how we did this was that um, we can just integrate uh, this value for x and that will give us the displacement of the car. Uh, uh, now uh, calculus isn't on the f equals to ma competition anymore, uh, so you don't need to know a calculus. Uh, so that's that's basically it for the uh, for the problems that I'm going to be solving today. Uh, so thank you for watching, and I'll see you on another video.